Hello everybody, it's Andy Pancholi here and I just want to bring you this uh, report on the 9th of March um, on the 90 year cycle, it, the cycle has clearly arrived uh, as I've been forewarning you for the last several years, uh, last two, three years this is the most critical financial time period of our generation if not this century so I'd like to take this opportunity to just update you on some views and ideas. This has been a very fast moving situation, faster than I'd anticipated as well. So I don't want to leave it to the end of the month. And this report really is for uh, basically uh, regular readers of the market timing report, as well as those of you that are participating in the trading course. And uh, we're going to put together some of the principles here. Um, so um, uh, let's take a look and see what's going on. As you know, I like to look at history to give us uh, clues about what's happening uh, now. And probably the uh, um, the first crash that we'd want to look at uh, in uh, living memory for some of us, uh, hopefully most of us, uh, was the 87 crash. And uh, if we take a look at this, uh, we, we see this high coming in here and we came down to here and then we carried on up. And it was a fairly straightforward event. But let's have a look to see what was going on. And um, let's go all the way back here to this low in 1974. Why have I picked that? Well, I think it's very relevant to uh, what we're looking at now. Uh, uh, those of you that have been following my work will know that I've been talking about the 90 year cycle from 1929. If you add 45 years ago, that took us to 1974. That was the Middle East and OPEC oil crisis. Well, what's happened this weekend? Oil, huge crisis. And the first mutterings of this was the Iran uh, event or so the USA in January. And now we've had this, uh, although it's not the same story with regards to oil, and it's, this is about Russia and uh, OPEC uh, and the Middle East, we have an oil crisis going on. So history is repeating exactly on schedule within the 45-year cycle. Well, you could argue it's a few months out, a few weeks out. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that really came in and sort of we got lows around about the end of December. So what are we? We're, uh, um, we are eight, nine weeks, aren't we? We're just nine, eight, nine weeks on from there. But the reason we took this point is it's the halfway point between 1929 and uh, 2019, which was the 90 year cycle coming in. Of course, that's just lingered slightly on, as you know, it's well within the tolerance. If we're looking at a 90 year cycle, you know, that that just um, it's well within. Well, it's not even one percent. I think it's about 0.3 of a percent in terms of time tolerance. But that's why I've taken this point here. And if you take this low here and the high there, then we see the market came down to the 38.2 retracement level. However, if we move the start point to this point here, uh, or why here? Specifically really because this area here uh, sees the acceleration of the move up. And this area is sort of heading up sideways to up, but then we start accelerating up. So this is a clear sort of uh, start point for this move. Taking this point here and up to this point here, we see that if we look at the retracements from that, we came all the way down to the 50% level here, and then we carried on up. So this saw a 50% retracement in 1987. Now let's take a look at this big high here, which came in in uh, 2000 and uh, uh, early into 2001. Why were we expecting this? Quite simply because this was the 72 year cycle from the 1929 top and also it was the two times 72 year or the 144 year cycle from the 1857 crash uh, and collapse, um, a big meltdown. So we were looking for something major to be happening here and when it came in this is exactly what happened. Again, using the same start point that we used in the 87 example, and you can see how trivial this uh, 87 crash now looks there. So we're taking this point here, we came all the way up to here, and we came down, and the first part of this collapse uh, there, and this was the, uh, uh, the low following 9-11, was round about the 38.2% Fibonacci level. But we did bounce back up from there, and then we came down for the next leg down. And that stopped pretty much at the 50% level. So again, this 50% level is pretty important around here. And uh, uh, that actually held the market there. Now let's just expand this a little bit further. And we bring in this high here, which is the 2007 high. Uh, why are we bringing in the 2007 high? Quite simply, the 100 year cycle from 1907 rich man's panic the 115 year 150 year cycle from the 1857 panic the 
200 year cycle from the 1807 embargo act and the 50 year cycle from the sell off in 1957 which is more a recessional cycle so these cycles were all coming together we were expecting something big same sort of price achieved there that's an interesting point to make again with the same point and uh, we can argue that this went just a weeny bit higher so we could just adjust that up to there and again we will see the market came down but this time it went straight through the 38.2 percent level straight towards a 50 percent level a bounce there and uh, and almost a touch of the 61.8 percent level so in exact now key point is that once we get into panics and this is definitely a panic this was the global financial crisis and you will most of you will remember this one uh, I certainly do. And uh, what you find is that things start, they, they exceed targets substantially. So be aware, point number one, we will often get an exceedance in a panic mode. And that's exactly what happened there. These are big exceedances as well, you know, in the scheme of things. This is a weekly chart. But we came down, the 50% was approximate support there. And we came down uh, almost touching the 61.8% level. So that's uh, an important point to note there. Uh, and these are big cycle uh, crises that are coming in. So let's bring the same scenario right up to date, the same concept up to date with where we are now. This is the high coming in of the 90 year cycle from uh, 1929, uh, which came in the beginning of September in 1929, October, November, December, January, February, five months on. Uh, so within tolerance and we got this high here and basically we are still working back to this 45 uh, year low there and taking Fibonacci uh, retracements or retracements from this because we've seen that in crashes and, and we are, I'm assuming this is the beginning of the 90 year move there, there are people that think this could go higher um, I know the smart money has been well I don't know what it's done today but up till Friday the smart money was buying and seeing it as a uh, an opportunity to go long but following the uh, weekend's OPEC oil crisis I think that uh, uh, that's probably less likely but you never know with these markets uh, it's um, always difficult to win because of intervention the government can come in I wouldn't be surprised to see a complete ban on uh, um, short selling my good pal uh, uh, broker and uh, um, expert trader and portfolio manager um, uh, Dan I won't mention his surname uh, thinks that's about to happen uh, but um, he's been right on several occasions. So uh, uh, we could possibly go higher. Um, one of the reasons I think we might not go higher is that this level here uh, becomes the 382 retracement. It's a very precise level. So by projecting the reverse engineering this as the old level, it did project this. And we did talk about that in one of the reports. Um, so uh, here we are up here. Um, realistically, in the big, big scheme of things, we might come down to around about 21.20 on the cash S&P. 17.29 is not impossible because it's the 50%. And we have seen 50%. And uh, 13.36 down here is um, um, a, uh, uh, also a potential level. Uh, now, given that this is a 90-year cycle, um, it's, it's not just a 90-year cycle, it's a 45-year cycle from the Middle East and oil crisis, as I mentioned already, this is repeating. Uh, it's not just a 90-year cycle, it's a 180-year cycle from the Long uh, Depression, um, which was from 1837 to 1842, where we got a massive crash. And you'll have seen this in the course um, uh, that's covered uh, in the uh, long-term cycles there. So uh, th these are things we have to be aware of. Whether we get intervention and whether it stops it from coming down, um, I don't know yet. And there, I'm going to show you something in a moment that uh, shows that uh, it will give the argument for an up move. Although personally, I do think the high is in. Um, so be aware of these levels in the super big picture to start with. So what I've now done is move these retracement levels from the beginning of this move, from the end of the global financial crisis there, 2009 up to here. And these are critical levels we need to look at. Bit of clustering there around the 50% level in the past. Um, not, not really uh, massively clear, but it, you know, it, it's a little scruffy, but it does still count. And curiously enough, we got a test of what was now the 382 level. It wasn't then at that point, but it is now. So that's what I always find quite interesting. But coming down the numbers here, 2355 would certainly see a reaction because not only will it be a uh, support level, it will also be um, um, the 38.2 uh, and, you know, a a sorry, it's a, a double bottom, really. That's that's the key point. So that's an important point, really. 
Uh, then we've got the 50% level here at 2034 and then uh, 1713. Now, um, I'm pretty sure we saw 1729 or 1730 as a significant level, as a 50% level when we looked at the bigger picture. So if we get down here, that, that was almost certainly going to be uh, significant support. Now, the other thing is that, as you know, my speciality is market timing. What we'll find is that when we hit these levels, timing can go out of the window slightly, especially in these big moves and panicky moves. However, uh, that's not to say that's going to be the case. Uh, so th these are the the, um, the the numbers we're looking at uh, right now uh, uh, on the move up over the last 10 to 11 years from there. Um, so that's that. Now I've zoomed in all the way back to the low in uh, December 2018, just after Christmas, that saw the beginning of this rally up to the top here. And you can see that we have come down uh, very little pausing here at the um, uh, the six. Um, sorry, we should flip those around. Let's do that. There we go. At the 38.2 level. In fact, we can probably move this into a daily chart and you can see this in a little bit more detail uh, like this. Like so. Uh, right. So you can see uh, we came down here and we just went straight through the 382 level, came down to the 50 percent level on a daily basis, then popped back up. And now we've come straight through, uh, gapping through the 382 level, straight down to the 618 level. And that's where we've closed tonight. So we have got a very similar scenario to what I was talking about in the previous bit, where we could see uh, a potential bounce because we've got a support level and a 618% uh, percent level there. So that's kind of uh, uh, quite a, a, an interesting uh, setup we're looking at right there. So bear that in mind. These different sets of levels are effectively for trading in different time frames. So the longest time frame one that I showed you, that's the really macro picture. These are levels where we might see bounces and uh, um, rebounds and then uh, counter trends as well. And uh, these are likely to uh, uh, tie up with the uh, timing points. Now, regular readers uh, of the report will have seen this uh, um, set of uh, uh, um, this pitchfork with the warning lines it's been our channel uh, we've hit up here and then we hit it again and we've come down we reverted to the median line that's always a good point to be above and below as long as that uh, keeps uh, intact that's fine uh, then we hit the bottom of this and today we've hit this level here now we've been through this once here and we've checked it once here but a break of this effectively would uh, definitely start seeing the the end of the the bull market and at that point i don't really see a chance of us recovering into any new highs as i say i'm not very uh, optimistic about new highs anyway uh given this situation but the other thing that uh a there's a degree of support here because we got it there but uh, if i pop this retracement in here that we've just shown you over here uh this these levels here this uh uh 2746 we, we have traded just a bit below that um but um that is coinciding exactly with this line so we are at a slightly strong support point no clear timing cycles uh this is very much uh, an ongoing situation it is monday night in the uk um after the close uh monday the 9th of march and uh i, th I think uh the one date that's really sticking out which uh, is in the report is the 17th of march uh i, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a reversal there but but also the 11th has some activity but the strength of this market is um looking like well we might get a bit of a pullback but then uh, a carry on down so these are just some of the levels and things i want to show you i so said i don't want to wait till the end of the month this is a busy situation we've been you know uh forecasting this for a long time it's here it's very very um impulsive um coronavirus isn't the cause it's a catalyst because the cycle was coming in anyway people are talking about black swans these are not black swans these are just big cycles and uh, um, <clears throat> that's exactly what, uh, how it all comes together so it waits it remains to be seen um, uh, what happens next uh, I'm not uh, I, I would anticipate we do head further down um, yeah, at least to one of the the larger uh, levels that you've seen the 38.2 uh, 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 and then uh, um, 50 percent levels that you've seen and potentially we could have a target of around about 1700 now uh, th these things um, usually don't happen overnight they can take several months to unfold however this has been a very rapid pullback 
the oil situation's quite a shocker. Um, but uh, there we go. That's what happens in these 90 year cycles. So I hope you find this useful. Uh, I don't have all the answers. We're just trying to get the odds on our side. Thank you.